All right, so we're going to go ahead and finish off uh, 10.2 today. Uh, the first thing we're talking about is a frequency table. A frequency table. A frequency table is something that you build when you are trying to build a histogram. Okay, we kind of, I kind of briefly told you we talked about histogram when we were talking about bar graphs, right? I said that bar graphs are for, but we said bar graphs are for categorical data. Okay. Whereas frequency tables are now going to be with, they're going to be with uh, quantitative data, just as your stem and leaf plots, okay? Your stem and leaf plots. So, the frequency table, so let's, how we build a frequency table. So in order to draw a histogram, we're going to do a histogram, right? A histogram gives you a certain number, right, or whatever, 30, and so on and so forth, and you're going to have, data that's going to look like this. This would be a histogram, right? So in order to find a histogram, you need to find from zero to five how many, how often does the data appear, right? How frequently does it come out? What is the frequency of the data between zero to five, five to 10, 10 to 15, 15 to 20, and so on and so forth, okay? So that's how you build a frequency table. So if you look at page, 696, in the middle, there's a frequency table of the stem and leaf plot data that we had in example four for the home runs of Babe Ruth, okay? In other words, if you look at the frequency table, it says zero to nine happened five times, 10 to 19 happened once, 20 to 29 happened, so on and so forth, and you can draw a histogram looking at, on the left-hand side, there is a histogram. As a matter of fact, there is a way to draw the, use, can, you can generate a histogram using your calculator, your TI-84s, okay? So I'm not going to go through all the, you know, how how you do that if you can you can look that you should look that up on YouTube I would go to YouTube and look I would search for TI 84 histogram right and it will tell you how to generate one okay all right so that's how you do that okay so what you get from it so what's the difference between histogram and let's kind of compare a histogram versus a stem and leaf plot, okay? Do we actually gain more insight or do we lose insight, okay? In other words, if I looked at a histogram, okay, I am going to, a stem and leaf plot is gonna, in, it's going to give me all this information here I can see on a stem and leaf plot. What I can't see, that I was able to see at a stem and leaf plot, is what these numbers actually were, okay? It says I have zero to five, I have, I don't know, let's say this was uh, 12, okay? The frequency was 12, let's say it was 12, right? I don't know if this is one 12 ones or 12 fours, or something in between or whatever or not. So in other words, some of the data is now hidden within here, and I've actually lost that. I do not see that, okay? In a seven leaf plot, I will see that, right? I, I will see that definitely. But in, when I go from a seven leaf plot to a histogram, I actually lose perspective of it, okay? I do not have that data anymore, okay? Okay, so that's the difference between a histogram and a seven leaf plot. So let's talk about the histogram itself. Okay, we talk about the histogram itself. I can describe this histogram. I can describe this histogram, all right? And we will talk about this when we get to statistics. There are four things that we have to show, or when I ask you the question, describe the histogram. There are four things that needs to show, you need to show, and the mnemonics is, we call it socks. So the first one is the shape. The shape, it can be what? This is roughly symmetric, right? Roughly symmetric, okay? So, we, so 
the shape is going to be either roughly symmetric or be skewed to the right or skewed to the left, okay? If I have a histogram that looks like this, okay, this is what we call skewed to you would, so can you would, you would intuitively think that it would be skewed to the left, but we call this skewed to the right. The data skews to the right, skews to the right, okay? So this is actually skewed to the right. to the right because I'm skewing down to the right, okay? So the shape is either going to be what? Skewed to the right, skewed to the left, or it's going to be roughly symmetric, okay? Another thing we can talk about in the shape is what else can we talk about? Sometimes you're going to have a data that looks like this, or sometimes you're going to have data that looks like this, okay? So this is what we would call unimodal, there is one mode, and this over here, there's two distinct peaks here, right? So we call this bimodal. So there's unimodal versus bimodal, right? Because I can look at this, I can tell you, I can say this one right here is roughly symmetric, right? Because it is roughly symmetric, okay? It's just not what you would immediately think if I told you it was roughly symmetric, okay? So this guy here is unimodal, this guy here is bimodal, okay? So usually it's going to be uni. so this is what the shape is, okay? So those are the two things you have to talk about, whether it's symmetric, symmetric or not, skewed to the right or left, unimodal, bimodal, that type of stuff, okay? O stands for outliers, okay? Okay, so usually you will, we will get to learn, we will learn a way to actually calculate, we will define what an outlier is, but as of now, we do not know that, so we're going to go ahead and say, if there's something that might be an outlier, you can say that it is a possible outlier. It looks like there's a possible outlier, okay? And then C is the center. When we talk about the center, we're talking about what? We're talking about either the mean, and median, and mode. Okay, and we'll go into that future later on. We'll go into more detail about that later on. But there are the three M's, right? So the center would be mean, median, or mode. Okay, and the last S is for spread. In other words, how widely spread out is my data? In other words, does my data look like this, or does it look like this? Okay, a large spread, small spread, okay? So if you want to, or you're trying to or characterize, or you're going to make some prediction with the data, what would you want? Do you want something that has a larger spread or a smaller spread, okay? Usually you want something that has a smaller spread because you are going to be able to get more accurately, you can describe it, right? Because the spread is so small here. In other words, your plus or minus is going to be very small versus over here. Your plus or minus is going to be fairly large. Okay? So that's how you, what you would use to do that. And then the next we have what is called a time plot. So we're going to get a time plot, page 698, and this is pretty self-explanatory. A time plot is it plots a certain variable as time goes by, right? So let's look at the time plot that we have on page 698. It's a time plot of the Dow Jones Industrial Average during the Great Recession. And it gives you a quick snapshot of what happened between March 7th to March 13th, okay? So, you can see there what happened, actually, right? And that's what, it's, what a time plot is. Why do we draw a time plot? Why do we look at these things? Why do we analyze these things, right? What are you trying to do? The, great, the greatest holy grail of statistics is what? In the end, you're trying to make predictions, right? In the end, you're trying to make predictions. If you go to Wall Street, there are people who do nothing but these. They know nothing but this their entire lives. They tried to predict what's going to happen to a stock, right? 
And why do you do that? Why do you want to be able to predict it? You want to make some money, right? You're going to say, well, if I know that this stock is going to go up based upon past history, based upon what's happening now, or whatever it may be, then I'm going to buy low and sell high, right? That's what you want to do. That's what we're going to do some predictions, right? Okay. So we're not actually going to go to do the example number six, that's, you know, or seven for that matter. I'll let you guys do that. And we're going to call it done here.